Now, Liberia's next president is calling for national unity. Joseph Wakai was declared the winner of the runoff poll by the narrowest of margins. The election commission said 78-year-old Wakai took 50.64% of the vote, only 20,000 votes ahead of his rival, incumbent George Weir. The outgoing president conceded defeat last Friday, a move that won him praise for promoting a non-violent transition in a region marred by coups. For more on this, let's bring in Rob Tell Nije Paley, a Liberian academic, activist and author. She's currently assistant professor in international social and public policy at the London School of Economics. Hello, Rob Tell, welcome to the program. Now, George Ria came in with a lot of goodwill. It was almost like a fairy tale situation. So what went wrong with his presidency? Where do I begin? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're absolutely right about the goodwill. There were so many young people across the country who voted in droves and turnout was astronomical. I mean, so much so that it broke records in terms of Liberia's post-war um, competitive elections. What went wrong, I would say, we had just surrounded himself with the wrong people. Um, he privileged loyalty over competence. And it's interesting because one of the first things that I did when he was uh, inaugurated in January 2018 was I listed a series of different things that I thought he should focus on. And one of those things was surround yourself with people who have the intellectual capacity to deliver in terms of development, but also the integrity. And what we did not neither of those. He mm -hmm. surrounded himself with people who were loyalists, not necessarily technocrats, not necessarily people who had the capacity to deliver any sort of development dividends in the country. And he surrounded himself with a lot of um, sycophants who were corrupt to the core. Mm -hmm. So you'll probably know from a lot of reportage internationally that three of his um, inner circle folks were indicted um, and uh, listed on a number of corruption scandal reports by the U.S. government. So those people I was expecting, and a lot of people who voted for WIA were expecting, um, in terms of that integrity and that capacity and intelligence, mm. just it failed. Uh, yeah. I think that was the first thing. I mean, if even if you don't have the capacity to run a country, um, which I don't think that WIA had, then you surround yourself with people who can, and you just take the credit for what they do. Mm. Uh, we have failed on those fronts, unfortunately. Okay, strong words there from you. Is that to say George Weir's tenure as president ruined his legacy as a national hero? There are still probably 49% of the population, at least the electorate, the, um, the people who registered to vote, who believe that George Weir should have been given a second mandate. And given how close the election results were between him and um, president-elect, former vice president Joseph Boykai, the fact of the matter is the country is still very much divided. And if those 49 percent of people had their way, George Weah would have been reelected. So I think it's too premature to say that these elections or his abysmal track record in the presidency has tainted his image as a national icon. I think in many respects, the fact that he conceded defeat so quickly um, and so gracefully has actually ingratiated him into the, the, the perspectives of a lot of people, both internationally as well as domestically. You'll see that a lot of people are praising him for conceding defeat because it could have gone the other way. He could have yeah. resisted. He could have decided to stay in power when so many of our other leaders across the subregion have done so illegitimately. Mm. Uh, but he stepped away. And I think his speech, his concession speech, was probably one of the most powerful speeches he's given in his six year tenure as president. So right. I think in many respects, you can think of him as bowing out gracefully as an emblematic of him being a national icon still in the eyes of a lot of people across the country, although his presidency was abysmal and disastrous for the country. I want to make that emphatically yeah. clear. I feel like you've really made it very clear quite strongly. But uh, you touched on it a bit earlier. Liberia has a, a history of civil wars, mainly caused by the fight for political power. And as you just said, that uh, Georgia gracefully bowing out after losing the presidency. What does this election say about the state of democracy in the country? I would say, I'd, I'd like to clarify something you said earlier. I don't think the civil war, the armed conflict, and I don't call it a civil war because it had international kind of ramifications. Um, the armed conflict in Liberia between 1989 and 2003 
the, the, the vast majority of scholars will argue that that armed conflict was about inequality, social inequality, socioeconomic inequalities in the country, not necessarily about the fight for political power. Mm -hmm. That may have been the face of it. But the fact of the matter is Liberia is an, a grossly unequal country, and it's still grossly unequal 20 years later. Um, in terms of democratic consolidation, I would say this is the fourth post-war elections and elections in the past um, 15, 16 years have been incredibly competitive. And I've said this a number of times that it's even more competitive than countries in the so-called global north. So you have 78 percent, um, the 78 percent of the electorate actually going out to vote. That rivals a lot of um, elections in the so-called global north in the UK where I reside. That number is, um, mm. is, is mushroomed. Um, so in terms of democratic consolidation, you see the sort of steady stream of elections being competitive and, uh, and the electorate really taking a stance and saying, you know what, mm. we are electing our duty bearers. And if they don't deliver public goods, we are going to ensure that they are not reelected. And you've seen that time and time again from 2005 until 2023, mm -hmm. where a number of legislators, both in the Senate as well as the House of Representatives, have lost their reelection bids because they just simply have not delivered. And now you see this going all the way up to the presidency. So I yeah. think Liberian people are demonstrating to um, the international community, to the region, that they are democratic consolidators. And this will be an upward trend in terms of the democratic consolidation of the country mm. going forward. Right, that's the whole point of democracy. You come, you do good, you stay. You do bad, you go. Well, let's wrap it up with this. Based on what we know from President-elect Joseph Wakai's time in government, does he have the track record to deliver what Liberia needs? I think Joseph Wakai has been a silent, steady kind of governance guru in many respects, right? So he he ruled as a, a vice president under the shadow of Ellen Johnson's relief. And many people sort of rebuked him in 2017 when he said that as vice president for 12 years, he was a parked race car. So he actually wasn't able to exhibit his agency and his authority in a way that was very meaningful for development. So I think there's a lot of expectation that we will see him come out of that um, parked race car kind of uh, demeanor mm. and really govern, um, but then govern with a coalition of people who do have the capacity, do have the intelligence, do have the integrity to serve the public good. So okay. there's a lot of goodwill in the same way that there was a lot of goodwill for George Wee in 2017. There's a lot of goodwill for uh, Joseph Boykai in 2023. And I think given the fact that he is, again, this sort of steady hand of experience, um, I think he does have the, the wherewithal and the power uh, okay. to govern Liberia out of the abyss that it's been in in the past uh, six years. Mm. In terms of what is urgent for him to do, what would be some of his main tasks as uh, incoming president, as a new president? Number one, to audit the George Weah administration. And he's already said that he will do that categorically. There's been just massive levels of theft massive levels of corruption taking place. And a lot of that, those monies or those funds need to be reconstituted to things like agriculture, food security, ensuring that people are employed, um, basic social services such as education and health, roads, roads infrastructure is absolutely key in terms of the economy. So I think number one, auditing the former government. And then number two, I would say, food security, because Liberia has a serious problem with its balance of payment, right? Imports are incredibly high, mm. exports are quite low. And if Liberia can be a food secure nation, then a lot of those funds that would be used for importing food, we could use for all the other development priorities. Right. Roptel Nije Paley, Liberian academic, activist and author. Thank you very much for your insights. Thank you for having me.